the congregation please stand okay Karen. I am resurrection I am life says the Lord whoever has faith in me shall have life even though he die and everyone who has life and has committed himself to me in faith shall, shall not, not die, die forever as for me, I know that my Redeemer lives, and that at the last he will stand upon the earth. After my awaking, he will raise me up, and in my body I shall see God. I myself shall see, and my eyes behold him, who is my friend and not a stranger. For none of us has life in himself, and none becomes his own master when he dies. For if we have life, we are alive in the Lord, and if we die, we die in the Lord. So then, whether we live or die, we, we are, are the Lord's, Lord's possession. possession. Happy from now on are those who die in the Lord, so it is, says the Spirit, for they rest from their labors. Well, good morning. We are here uh, to honor Marjorie Ann Peck Davis. Margie, the great Margie. And so we come here uh, to worship and to praise the God who has raised her to new life. And so, uh, would you join with me in our hymn? Our hymn is number 473, which can be found in your pew hymnal. We'll sing verses 1, 2, and 4. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, who by the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, he destroyed death and brought life and immortality to light, grant that your servant Margie, being raised with him, may know the strength of his presence and rejoice in his eternal glory, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Most merciful God, whose wisdom is beyond our understanding, deal graciously with us in our grief, 
Surround us with your love, that we may not be overwhelmed by our loss, but have confidence in your goodness and strength to meet the days to come. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. You may be seated for the reading of Holy Scripture. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and to release the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord favor, uh, Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. They will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord to display his glory, the word of the Lord. Um, Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures, He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The word of the Lord. Hi, I'm Lita Carter, and I um, was fortunate enough to be given the opportunity to be quarantined with Margie six years ago. Not only did I find a friend, but a best friend. And I'm forever grateful to Charlie and the Davis family for letting me love this beautiful, funny, loving lady and soul for having me and always making me feel like family. So thank you. A book from the Readings Rooms. For all who are led by the Spirit of God, are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ, if in fact we suffer with him, so that we we may also be glorified with him. I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory about what will be revealed to us. For the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the children of God. Who is to condemn? It is Jesus Christ who died, yes, who was raised, who is the right hand of the Father, who indeed intercedes for us, who will separate us from the love of Christ, will hardship or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or pearl, or sword. No, in all these things, we are more than the conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, 
nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depths, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because a hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me, just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there, so there will be one flock, one shepherd. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Amen. You may be seated. As I've, uh, as I've matured a little bit, <laughs> matured maybe phys physically, my back aches and all that kind of stuff, but uh, I've, I have found, this is going to be a little shocking, Hollywood movies don't always tell the truth. <laughs> shocking. They don't always give you the full story. Back in the early 80s when I was in college, you know, you'd You'd want to take a date, and you want to take them to a romantic movie and, and all those kind of things. And the most iconic movie was Officer and a Gentleman, right? You had the, the handsome uh, Richard Gere, and, and he goes into the factory, and he grabs Deborah Winger, and they, they walk out, and they live happily ever after. And they always look like they're in their 20s and stuff like that. Well, I found the, the equivalent to that in a re, real story, in God's story. 
I found a woman who watched over her Air Force fighter pilot in the last few years of his life. It's greater than the story of officer and gentleman. He's not, he's not carrying her up those windy, spindly stairs of hers on Mandela. She's walking up numerous times a day to take care of Dick, who, after a great career as a Korean War fighter jet pilot, lawyer, raised his beautiful kids, Dickie and Debbie, and grandchildren, Margie would walk those long spiral steps up there to watch over Dick and to love on him and to listen to his music playing on that little keyboard of his, cleaning him up, feeding him, smiling like Margie always does. Now that's a love story. That's a love story that I know Hollywood won't make, but it's a witness to the testimony of Jesus Christ's love that was found in Dick and in Margie. A love story like no other. After all these years, after a, a failing health that she would love on him like no other. Margie was, is an icon in this church. You know, we're going to have... Uh, we're going to have some little scrumptious stuff. Uh, I was hoping 7-Eleven would cater this, but, uh, you know, Margie said, uh, I know a bakery, uh, and Charlie. <laughs> I could tell you this. Margie could have pastries in her refrigerator for about a month, and she would say, you know the very best pastries ever in the whole world? You want some? They come from Bakery Lorraine. Have you ever heard of it? <laughs> as many times as I've gone there, over and over again, she would talk about Bakery Lorraine. She talked about all her grandkids. She took talk about her beautiful uh, granddaughter-in-law. And after a while, though, after uh, a bunch of us would go over there, I know Monica. Uh, would go quite a bit to, to see Margie, and then after a while, Karen and I would uh, take communion to her. She would incessantly talk about her kids and her grandkids, especially her grandkids. But after a while, they took a back seat to these little rugrats here, which is great. I'm so glad they're here. Her face would light up when she would talk about her, these grandkids. I think about a month ago when uh, I was visiting her for the, uh, one of the last times, Trace and Rachel were there with the two, and they, they were just like now, running around, getting into everything, and her eyes were fixed on them. Her eyes were fixed on them. She probably couldn't hear that, but her eyes were fixed on them, right? Margie uh, was one of a kind, and I invite you to come to the parish hall because before Ann Wright, who's our head of our uh, receptions uh, for our burials, it was Margie Davis. Margie, sweet little, sweet little, nice little Margie, made sure everything looked right, made sure people knew about the reception that would take place, and you needed to do like she told you. She wanted things right, and you did it her way. Who knew? I didn't know that side of Margie. But what I knew about Margie was this. She loved the Lord Jesus Christ with all that she had. She understood where her power and her love and her energy came from. She knew that he is the risen Lord the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. The music that we sang, hallelujah, hallelujah, give praise to the risen Lord. She knew him faithfully. Lift high the cross. In the last few years of her life, she met 
uh, she met a soul that was just like hers in Lita. Two peas in a pod. Little age difference. But you would find them giggling and laughing uh, together like they had grown up with each other. Every morning Lita was there, they would sing Lift High the Cross. Isn't that great? They would sing Lift High the Cross. That's what I want. I want a love story like Dick and Margie. And I want to live faithfully, faithfully in the one who is the risen Lord and none other. Amen. the assurance of eternal life given at baptism, let us proclaim our faith and say together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And now let us pray in the words our Lord has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. The congregation, the church calls upon Trace and Charlie to give some words from the family. Trace and Charlie. Hi everyone, my name is Trace. I am her second eldest grandson. And I just want to thank everybody for being here today to remember Margie, or as the grandkids called her, Daju. We so affectionately called her that. Um, Charlie is responsible for that name, so ask him why. But in, in talking about her, I kind of want to talk about two things, right? What a happy person she was and how much she loved her family. I know we keep hearing about family, but it really meant a lot to her. And so when talking about how she was a happy person, she wasn't just happy some of the time. She wasn't just happy once a week. She was genuinely wired internally to be happy all the time. And I mean, it really showed. People would meet her, they would know her, and they would walk away thinking, wow, like, I want to be like her. I want to be genuinely happy. And so, I, you know, funny story, and I have to tell, say this is a joke, but this is the impact that she had, like her happiness, her personality had on people. Um, for a few years, her and my wife went to the same primary care doctor. And one day my wife comes home, said we were sitting there, she was sitting there talking with Dr. Garza, and somehow Daju came up and she goes, you know, I told him, I said, Whatever her levels are, whatever her labs are, whatever her chemical balances are, I want those. Whatever she's taking, I want to take, because I want to be like her. I, want, I don't want to have to try to be happy. I just want to be happy all the time. And I thought, you know, that is the impact that she had on people. Like, they really genuinely wanted to be like her. And I think that's a pretty strong thing to say. And, you know, literally in talking about, you know, how we remember her, how we honor her, you know, since she's passed. Any day now that we have a, a, a you know, hard day, a rough day, kids are screaming, whatever, life is hard, we'll just text each other, we'll just tell each other, hey, let's be more like Daju today. I mean, that, that is how we remember her. And I think that's pretty powerful. Right, and so second thing I want to talk about is her family, right? I mean, you've already heard it. She loved her family. She loved her kids, her grandkids, and especially her great-grandkids. I know I get some flack for saying I'm pretty sure she was more excited to see her great-grandkids than her grandkids and her kids. Um, but I think it was true. Maybe as she got older, she just liked little kids more. I don't know. It's possible. But... Um, I, I, a couple of funny stories about, you know, her family, right? So when my wife and I, you know, were having our first child, right, um, he was here for a minute. It was the one that was screaming. He's now outside. Uh, we were in the hospital right after we, you know, my wife had just delivered him. There's a lot going on, right? It's kind of chaotic. You're trying to, you know, I'm trying to be the best husband I can, take care of her. Uh, she'll tell you it was a learning curve for me. And, you know, I did better the second time. But, uh, you know, after all that was going on, you try to make a couple of quick phone calls, like tell your parents, hey, we just had, you know, your first grandson, got to go, but I'll call you later more. And, you know, and I called my dad. He said, look, I know you're busy. I know you got a lot going on. But I really need you to call your grandmother because she's about to pass out. She's sitting at home, and she is, like, out of body. She's just, she needs to know. And so, I mean, that was how much family meant to her, right? Um, second thing is, you know, when we got home from the hospital with our first son, her great-grandson, literally, she was over there as fast as she could, right? As fast as Lita could drive her over there. You know, she already put stuff in our front yard. And, but, but as fast as she could get over there, and I swear, she kicked in the door as, as best a 90-year-old with a walker could, could kick in a door. She was in the house. And she was just screaming, where's my baby? Where's my baby? And 
any, anybody that's had a, a kid, especially uh, a new mom of a new, new, newborn son, you're pretty protective of that son, right? Like you just delivered this kid, and so she was in the bedroom with, with our son, and you know, Daju had just walked in, and she's like just screaming, where's my baby? I said, look, Daju, I love you, but my wife's, you know, Rachel's a little bit protective right now. You can't go in there screaming, where's my baby? Like, <laughs> it's her baby. And she just wouldn't stop. And so I had to go back and I said, look, Rachel, I'm just going to tell you now, she's going to be screaming, where's her baby? Just let it go. And so Rachel's like, she is the only one that can say that. Nobody else can say my baby. Because we're going to have a problem in this house if they come in screaming, where's my baby? And that, that was, you know, how much she loved her great grandkids. And I mean, she loved all her family. And, you know, one last thing I want to say is, especially after her husband passed away, right? You know, my dad and me, we would go over there all the time to check on her to make sure she was good. We'd go over there a few times a week. And I kind of liked it because every time we'd go in, I felt like a rock star. I mean, she was just like, oh, you're so wonderful. You're so awesome. I mean, I could have come over looking like, you know, trash. I could have come over in a, in, in a bad mood. It didn't matter. I just walked in. She goes, oh, you're so wonderful. You're so awesome. I love you so much. And it kind of felt good. It's like, yeah, okay. I mean, I didn't have to do anything. Um, I, I could have walked in and I even talked to her, and she would have just, you are so wonderful. She said wonderful a lot when talking about her family. And, you know, I, I just, it really, I, I never felt so important as when I did with her because she made her family feel like they were so important because they were important to her. They really were. And uh, one last thing, and my wife wanted me to say this, is, you know, when I would go over there for many years, you know, if she needed something done, hey, I need a light bulb changed, hey, an outlet went out, can you replace it? Hey, can you fix this door handle, the toilet handle broke, whatever. That was, that was my job, right? And I would gladly do it, but I would go over there and she'd say, hey, that outlet's, you know, bad, can you replace it? So I'd go, you know, turn off the power, go in there, take the plate off, and I would turn around and put the plate down and, and get a uh, you know, pliers or something, and she would just go, oh, that's so wonderful, that's so wonderful. And I said, I haven't even done anything yet. It didn't matter. She's like, that's great. I could have just stopped right there. And, I mean, she was sitting over me, watching me do these tests, like change the light bulb like it was fourth and goal in the Super Bowl. She was so excited. And, I mean, that is, is how important it was. Anything her family did was important. Um, so I think that kind of really, to me, sums up the things I wanted to cover. Um, so, yeah, I'll let Charlie kind of come up after that. Yeah, thanks, Grace. You know, I don't, I don't yeah, and to anyone who doesn't know me, I'm uh, Charlie Biedenharn. Um, I am the oldest of uh, Dodgers, uh grandchildren and um, just to put it out there we are uh, hiring a new marketing team for Bakery Lorraine on Indeed so if anybody's <laughs> looking for a new job uh, the marketing department has really really suffered in the, um, but you know I, I Trace and I had been talking the last couple weeks or well, the last week and, and talking with Scott as well and, and we really wanted to say a few words up here just about what Daju meant to both of us and and um, you know I don't I you know I, I, I have a script to stick to but you know just to, to echo what he said uh, I mean, I, I'm not sure that there was a source or a spring of you know uh, next to next to spirituality or, or um, you know, or or uh, some sort of Christ or Savior or something like that. I'm not sure that there was a source of, of unconditional love that I've ever found that rivaled hers. Um, and, you know, that will be extremely missed. But today, today we celebrate my grandmother. 
um, my mother's mother, Marjorie Peck Davis, and to echo Trace, most here knew my mother Debbie and McMahon, Debbie Ann McMahon, and it's hard to believe that in a week from today she will have left this earth 17 years ago. Many of you know the special relationship that my mom and grandmother had Dodger, but it brings me some peace to know that perhaps they're finally together in some form because I know how much Dodger missed my mom every day. Uh, not to mention my late grandfather's birthday is in just a few days as well and it brings me some peace today to think that perhaps their spirits are finally reconnected in some form, as they certainly are in my heart. And I know how much my grandmother missed my mom. And on a selfish level, I, I wish I, I still had her around. Uh, as many of you know, but some of you may not, there, there were a lot of protracted periods of, of, of time in my life, especially in my youth, from the ages of about four to eight that I would often stay at 210 East Mandalay. <laughs> this afforded me a, a closer bond with my grandparents than most, most children in particular, uh, but especially with Dodger. Well, my grandfather as well, I gotta say, but today is Dodger's day that we're really, and, it, and her and I had a, a very special relationship. We love to clean up her house. Uh, not sure idea whose idea that was. Um, and we'd pick, we'd pick off the snails eating her flowers from the garden and crunch them in the front, in front of the house on Mandalay, <laughs> dubbing the act snailing. We'd take picnics to the zoo every Saturday and Sunday. Uh, my grandfather and I would play the guitar and various instruments, and my grandmother would join in as well on the piano. And, uh, you know, and one of my all-time favorite things to do was go out to, go out to base to see what kind of deals we could get at the PX. And <laughs> man, um, they had some steals out there. And, uh, Yes, you know, never, never was I really able to ever actually save up the money to take advantage of anyone, but, <laughs> but, uh, but it was exciting, um, you know, it, it you know, it, and uh, we really had a blast. It, it was really all centered around Dodger's sense of humor, because while my grandfather had a great sense of humor, he was usually too busy yelling at me for having a beverage in his car or flipping the bird to another driver. <laughs> and I recall on more than one occasion, Dodger and I were on the brink of a road rage incident. <laughs> Nonetheless, through good times and bad, her, her, her perspective, sense of humor and gratitude for the world around her always kept her the person that I knew and could rely on. Most importantly, and something that was hard to come by in my life, she was always there for me. Uh, as, as we both grew older, but not up, <laughs> I learned a lot from her. Most importantly was Rule 62. And some of you might not know what that means, but Rule 62 is, is known as don't take yourself so darn seriously. <laughs> it got us through many difficult situations and helped us navig navigate difficult people. Up until about five years ago, I'd regularly go over to her house for famous burn and serve grilled cheese sandwiches as we called them. <laughs> If, if, <laughs> if, if the smoke alarm wasn't triggered, it wasn't right. <laughs> However, these things 
st started to change. My, my cousin Trace got married and started a family and has two adorable boys that Dodger adored. And suddenly the talks and focus about me shifted to talking about how adorable these babies are. Let me tell you, this was a very hard pill to swallow. I'm totally kidding. In fact, in the instances I got to see her absolute adoration for them, a, a familiar spark returned to her, her eyes that I hadn't seen since the days that I was that age. And it was a beautiful thing to watch that the woman whose heart, that, that a woman whose heart couldn't be filled with more joy overflow with even more joy with the kids when these kids would come around. I realized I had been replaced to some degree and, <laughs> and all the, and you know, it was such a beautiful thing to watch. All the generations of Davises in the same room laughing and smiling. Dickie even stopped talking about Hunter Biden's laptop and George Soros long enough <laughs> that I got to witness what a great grandfather he was <laughs> to his grandkids. <laughs> because he truly because he truly is. And it was it was really great to watch to watch him have a blast with those boys showering them with love and I only joked to add levity here and I hope it's well received. <laughs> I'm confident everyone here has been touched by her in some way because uh, that's who she was. A picture of grace and forgiveness. With her, there were, there were no big deals. Well, maybe except for that one time in seventh grade that she caught Max Shanker and I with cigarettes in the backyard. That, that was a big deal. But other than that, she had the power to forgive anyone. Uh, when, I, when I quit a number of bad habits in 2009, she decided to quit drinking as an act of solidarity as well, even though I'm not a, sure I even ever saw her drink in my life. She decided to do this and, um, and would often talk about how great her life had changed. Uh, but, yeah, I, 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 yeah I, I was not even aware that she drank. Um, but knowing her as well as anyone in the room knew her, I... I wholeheartedly say that forget I can wholeheartedly say that forgiveness was something that came that was I mean it was intrinsic to her it, it was as much a part of her as as anything you know ha having lo lost most of my immediate family I'm not really all of my immediate family now it's uh, um, you know I've I've really learned not to deify the people that we love who pass. Because it's really, it's all too easy. It, it, uh, you know, it, it's, it's kind of like, it's kind of like convincing myself that Port Aransas is nice after not being there for a while. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's uh, you know, it, it, it's, uh, you know, I forget, you know, I mean, I forget people's faults and, and you tend to, you know, you think of all the good things and, and, and you know, and, and, and that's a great thing, but truly when I think of my grandmother and I think of her as a person and, and holistically and everything about her, you know, I, I can't come up with any, you know, she was... She was truly a personification for all love and kindness in the world. And in this place of worship where we are right now, where, you know, where we're taught to love one another regardless of race, religion, creed,
political affiliation, nationality. You know, um, forgiveness seems just as important as any of those precepts, and I can't help but be overcome with gratitude to have the grandmother that I had and, you know, at times substitute mother that taught me to rise above any pettiness or any resentment and to see the good in people and to open my heart and think altruistically and give people chances but without being a doormat, you know? And I, I wish I could stand here and say that this is how I wake up every morning. Sadly, it's not. <laughs> you know, I, but I was lucky enough to have this woman who loved me so much act as a pole star who at parts of my childhood and adult life was also one of my best friends. You know, and like I said, was always there for me. Never leaving me questioning her love for me because it was palpable. And I think to myself, maybe I can have one-tenth of the perspective she had today. And sometimes I do. And if I, if I do, that's a big win. You know, and I, and I think bigger, you know, when I was thinking about this, I, I you know, it, it, I, I, you know, something that comes to mind is, is, is I, th I think bigger, and I, I think, you know, if this community, or even just this room, could see the world through the rose-colored glasses that she saw the world through, I'm certain that if we all strove to be, to have this dodgy disposition, as I could dub it, <laughs> affirmation, that we would not only benefit as individuals, but our communities, countries, and ultimately the world would change for the better. And the problems de jour would fall by the wayside. I'm not sure how I got so lucky to have so much time with this lady because I really look at the the window of time I had with her as as luck because uh, you know I, I uh, you know it's I mean it, we can't help but I mean I, at least for me I, I, I you know there there's there's a lot. A lot of time I, I, I took for granted, but but uh, but you know, at the end of the day, it, it's it. Uh, you know, every day I knew, just knowing that I was loved by this person, even if I didn't talk to her, it it, it was something that was really special and. Um, you know, and, you know, and I'm not, you know, as, as I, so as I say my final goodbyes to her and honor at her at this memorial service, I recall that I was lucky enough to honor her in front of a full Empire Theater of about 12 or 1,500 people to speak about her extraordinary life. Years ago at a event called Pecha Kucha and tell the story of her life and tell her just how much she meant to me and all of us while she was sitting in the audience and got to hear it. And you know, and uh, and um, you know, it, it, I'm overcome. And these things, while she was, in, you know, there was a number of years that every oh, and tell her these things while she was still with us. And after subsequent to that, 
every poor handyman that went to her house had to watch that YouTube video of me giving that talk at the Empire Theater, <laughs> even if they were just fixing a picture frame on the wall, a five-minute trip turned into a 25-minute trip. Nonetheless, I am overcome with gratitude that someone showed me how to try to have this perspective, to not grow up, realize that I don't have to take myself too seriously, even if I have to do serious things, or things I don't like, the things that I don't like the outcomes, yet even in those situations when things feel unbearable, forgiveness and acceptance are always paramount. And thank you, Daju, Thank, thank you, Daju, for helping me to be hopefully one-tenth the person you were every morning. I'll miss you. Love, Charlie. And last, I just wanted to echo how appreciative our family is to Lita Carter, who... Uh, happened to quarantine with, with, with my grandmother during COVID and has been uh, a, a, just a great companion and caretaker for the last six years or for five years or so. So thank you. And I would just like to second that, that Lita has truly been an angel, and she is now a part of our family. So thank you. For our sister Marjorie, let us pray to our Lord Jesus Christ, who said, I am resurrection and I am life. Lord, you consoled Martha and Mary in their distress. Draw near to us who mourn for Marjorie and dry the tears of those who weep. Hear us, Lord. You wept at the grave of Lazarus. Your friend comfort us in our sorrow. Hear us, Lord. You raise the dead to life. Give our sister eternal life. Hear us, Lord. You promised paradise to the thief who repented. Bring our sister to the joys of heaven. Hear us, Lord. Our sister was washed in baptism and anointed with the Holy Spirit. Give her fellowship with all of your saints. Hear us, Lord. She was nourished with your body and blood. Grant her a place at the table in your heavenly kingdom. Hear us, Lord. Comfort us in our sorrows the death of our sister Marjorie. Let our faith be consolation and eternal life of hope. Amen. Give rest, O Christ, to your servant with your saints. Where sorrow and pain are no more, neither sighing but life everlasting. You only are immortal, the creator of man, maker and man of mankind. And we are mortal, formed of the earth, and to earth shall we return. For so did you ordain when we, you created me, saying, You are dust, and to dust you shall return. All of us go down to the dust, and even at our grave we make our song. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia. Give, Give rest, O Christ, to your servant with your saints, where sorrow and pain are no more, neither sighing but life everlasting. Into your hands, O merciful Savior, we, um, we commend your servant, Marjorie. Acknowledge, we humbly beseech you, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive her into the arms of your mercy, into the blessed rest of everlasting life, into the glorious company of the saints in light. Amen. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of the Son, our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you, remain with you always. Amen. Amen.
Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God.